Hey guys, thanks for joining us for this 150th episode in Season 2 of Good Questions with Cameron Dole. Special guests on this episode include comedian and author George Wallace. We'll talk about the book, Bull Twit, and whatnot. Also, his upcoming performance at Mike's Fall Soul Celebration at the Bridgestone Arena, Saturday, November 27th. We'll also visit with basketball player, dancer, and rap artist Iman Shumpert. We'll talk about Dancing with the Stars and his new single, Outside. We'll also visit with Robbie Gray and Mick Conroy from Modern English. They've got a new live CD DVD to talk about, also going to be available on vinyl. And we'll visit with luxury home builder Scott Hamilton Harris. We'll talk about the housing market and how shipping issues are causing effects on building projects. Of course, if you would, please take the time to subscribe, comment, leave some feedback, check out the shop, and share with your friends. Now, if all you want for Christmas is Mariah Carey and McDonald's, you're in luck. She's here to bring you 12 days of free food with her, quote, Mariah menu. There's only a few small catches. The promotion is only available in the McDonald's app, and you have to spend at least a dollar to be eligible for the free daily item. It'll start December 13th and run through the 24th. Now, some of the free items include a Big Mac, apple pie, six-piece chicken McNuggets, and breakfast items like pancakes and a sausage egg McMuffin. Each day has a designated item. Now, items ordered from the menu will come in special packaging that is, quote, inspired by Mariah's love for the holidays and chic style. Mariah said, quote, some of my favorite memories with my kids are our family trips to McDonald's, and of course, each of us has our go-to order. Mine is the cheeseburger, and I get it with extra pickles. Bringing together some of our favorite food from McDonald's with my all-time favorite season is a holiday wish come true. Always good to have back a friends of the show, especially when they're as great as the one and only George Wallace. George, it is always great to visit with you. Appreciate you taking the time, brother. Well, right black at you, right black at you. I'm so happy to be with you today. Anytime I get a chance to talk to Tulsa, because y'all living on Tulsa time, and I just, I just <laughs> had to say that. And George, I know that you've got to be excited. Your first live stand-up event coming up on the 27th, the uh, Mike's Fall Soul Celebration, Bridgestone Arena, Nashville, Tennessee. Tell us how excited you are about this event coming up. Well, I can't wait to go back to Nashville. I haven't been there in a while because, uh, you know, I'm doing some new jokes about the Southerners. There's something wrong with people in the South. You got Alabama, Texas, Georgia, South Carolina, and Florida competing on who has the most stupid stuff going on in that state. So I'm going to talk about <laughs> I'm going to talk about Tennessee and Nashville because if you've ever been to Nashville, every corner they got a, a First Baptist Church. Every corner, a first. All these churches cannot be the First Baptist Church. Okay. So I want to talk to those people about that. And some of the churches are brand new, like a year and old. How the hell are you going to be the first and you're new on the block? <laughs> it doesn't make so sense. Talk, it doesn't make sense. So we're going to talk about, uh, uh, definitely going to talk about the holiday weekend after Thanksgiving, uh, visiting your family and can't wait to get the hell out of there. So we're going to talk about that. <laughs> and you know, this, you know, that's the truth. I visited my family at Thanksgiving. This happened many years ago. And I'm sitting around the table and I'm going, Thank God it'll be another 365 days before I see these greedy suckers again. And you, you ever sit around the table and you're just thinking, oh, this is so good, Ma, this is so good, I'm so happy to be with y'all. And you look at your clock around 6 o'clock and go, I got to get the hell out of here. These people are driving me crazy. <laughs> it, it was great to see you, but man, it's time to go. <laughs> it's amazing, but uh, we're going to be talking also, I might even read my book on stage. Yeah, tell our listeners your excitement about having the book available too. The book is called Bull Twit and whatnot. Bull Twit is based on the Twitter world. And I thought I would never tweet. And I said, but you know what? There's 500 million tweeters per day. And some of these people would never be able to see me. So I start sharing my little jokes. And it's online ramblings on, 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 from my brain, like stupid things I will straight up do. You know, like I'll eat cupcakes out of a pan. And I'll eat pancakes out of a cup. <laughs> I'll straight up. I don't care. No, I don't play by the rules, you know. Things that I do. So I'll drink a half a glass of 
whole milk and a whole glass of half and half. I don't <laughs> give a crap. Okay? These are Australia. I'll eat English muffins in France and French toast in England. I don't, you know, so things like that. We just have fun. The book is called Bull Twit and Whatnot. Whatnot means you can go into any area you'd like to go to. And um, and it's at georgewallace.net. You can buy the book. Last time I did Amazon, but they take half your money. You know, you got to pay for that spaceship that's going up. So, <laughs> yeah. <I think> <laughs> yeah, they got to pay for that somehow. Yeah. And, you know, that's what crime is, right? Do you, you, know what we should, you know what we should do? We should um, invest in boxes. Do you, I order something from, Am, from uh, Amazon every night. I don't know what's wrong with me. I just love ordering things, but they ship out more stuff than anybody, don't they? Oh, my goodness. Far and away more than anybody else does. Now, George, tell tell our listeners about uh, the other guests that are going to be a part of the Fall Soul Celebration coming up on the 27th. Oh, are you kidding? It's going to be George Wallace. It's going to be Anthony Hamilton. And it's going to be my favorite singer. Oh, my God. Miss Patti LaBelle. Patti LaBelle. And I want to talk to her because, oh, you know what I want to talk about? Because that's going to be the holiday season. And that's when most people buy that sweet potato pie. You know, she's known for having mm-hmm. a sweet potato pie, and she sells it at Walmart for $3.48. I want to ask her, what the hell is she putting in the pie? Because I know for a fact, if you go to the grocery store and you buy the pan and the crust, that's two forty eight. dollars So she ain't putting but a... <laughs> you, think, you, think I could ask, you think I could ask her that? Maybe she gets so a cut. Ain't, you ain't putting but a dollar worth of stuff in the pie. What are you? But it's probably... Anytime you put cinnamon and brown, and, and brown sugar on anything, it's going to be good. We know that. So we'll be talking about that in Nashville, uh, Tennessee, and we're going to have some fun no matter what, because laughter is the greatest medicine in the world. And people love to laugh, especially coming out of this pandemic. People love to laugh. And I'm just so blessed to be able to uh, bring the joy, bring the, the smoke, as they would say. Yeah. And, and George, did have you found it harder to find humor over these last couple of years? I actually found it easier. Because, you know, if you can make somebody laugh, that is pretty good. Because I talk about the things uh, where COVID got me through. You know, I was so strict about it. Uh, I, I was locked down. I was confined. I didn't let anybody in my house. My daughter came by to visit me, and I live on the 25th floor, and I just waved at her. I said, keep moving. Keep moving. As close as you're going to get. And, you know, just telling jokes like that, making up jokes. Nobody come in my house. Only let, I let Sara Lee come in my house. I let Ben and Jerry come in my house. And I let Johnny Walker come in. The only reason I let Johnny Walker come in because he was black. But, you know, <laughs> so my job is to keep rolling with the jokes and, I, and laughter is the greatest medicine. So whatever anybody goes through, if it's death or whatever it is, at the end of the day, we got to keep laughing. You can't even fake a smile without feeling better. That's right. That's right. And George, again, I want to make sure and let our listeners know uh, the website uh, to be able to catch up with everything you got going on. And you must tweet me, George Wallace. Tweet me at Mr. George Wallace. I want to see how many tweeters come in this day, right now, at Mr. George Wallace. Put some laughter in your life. And don't forget, buy the book at georgewallace.net. Okay, if you're in Nashville, Tennessee, get your tickets for the Bridgestone Arena. That's who put me through college, by the way. <laughs> That's it awesome. Was Fire, it was Firestone Town River, and they bought uh, Bridgestone bought Firestone Town River, and they put me through college, the University of Akron, Akron, Ohio. That is awesome. And George, always great to visit with you, sir. I appreciate you taking some time and uh, looking forward to everything you got coming up, brother. Don't ever forget, I love you and there's absolutely nothing you can do about it. I'm George Wallace. See you. Now, what's something that instantly fills you with rage? Well, 2,000 people were polled and here are the 10 things that got the most votes. Number one, when someone cuts in line in front of you. 44% of people said it's rage-inducing. Number two, rude people in general. Number three, when someone thinks the rules don't apply to them. Number four, when you're stuck on hold and have to keep pushing different numbers to get to the right department. Number five, people who don't say please and thank you. Number six, hidden fees. Number seven, shallowness and ignorance. Number eight, when you're in a crosswalk and someone speeds through without stopping. Number nine, people who chew with their mouth open. And number 10, ATM fees or having to pay to withdraw cash. Now, a few more that made the list include construction sounds on a Saturday morning, finding a parking ticket on your car, gas prices, drivers who don't use blinkers, 
And when a self-checkout machine at the store freezes up, so an employee has to come help you. I mentioned to him before we came on, when the season of Dancing with the Stars started, Iman Shumpert was not one of the ones I had at the top of my list, but uh, but now, Iman, you've changed things. It's a privilege to visit with you, brother. Hey, you didn't have, you didn't have me at the top? <laughs> oh, man. <that's, laughs> no, it's, it's cool, man. It's been cool being on the show, man. I don't think a lot of people uh, expected me to uh, really, really commit. Um, and really do the dancers at the level. Uh, but I, I really uh, try and give a commitment to anything I give my time to. I try and give a, a full commitment uh, when it's time to give a show. Now, for you, Iman, did you know coming in, did you have an idea that you could be in it to win it, if you will? I always feel like I could be in it to win it. Um, I'm a ultra-competitive um ultra competitive person and uh anytime i can go at some competition and you know send somebody home so to speak in playoff four <laughs> i think once they started uh speaking semi-finalists and you know get to the finals i'm like once you start talking that that's my language so i'm like trying to like continue to be a friend before i turn into like the ultimate competitor <laughs> so when they start mentioning the semifinals and finals and all that stuff do you start gritting your teeth as soon as you hear those words yeah i i, I go into a mode man I, I like to i like to win uh i don't i've never played any game to lose I, i've only come to win and uh, I like that fight or flight feeling. I like that that nervousness of you know, will we be victorious or will I you know fall off the bike and land on my face? <laughs> now, also on the side, got music. I, actually, I don't know that I would say it's on the side, but uh, got a new single to talk about as well. And Iman, tell us about the single outside, where that came from, and to have it in the hands and ears of listeners. Outside. Um, it's just a term that I think, you know, it could mean a lot of different things. Uh, but I started to watch the, the word take a, a negative turn. And it's a word that, uh, you know, I, I, and I say a word in, as in uh, that we, we started to use in, in just our slang conversations. Um, and uh, just starting to hear it float to something that can be considered negative we kind of wanted to fight to keep it in the positive and create a sound that reminded you of a fun day, uh, like a Saturday, Sunday weekend feel uh, at night where, you know, you're sort of just going out with love around you and, you know, anything goes, but you're not really in a vibe of feeling like you want to get into anything negative. It's all about positivity, having a good time, making it home safe with love around you. Um, so, uh, yeah, I think it's a, a feel good single and, you know, I haven't dropped anything in a long time. So I feel like it'll be a, a, a good song to have, uh, next to my name as, you know, people haven't heard me and haven't, you know, seen where I'm sitting and where I'm thinking, uh, you know, at 31. For you, how hard was it to keep a positive in the midst of all the stuff that we've gone through these last couple of years, Iman? I think that uh, with not being in the NBA uh, consistently um, as I was in previous years, I think I was looking for anything to attach my mind to. Uh, I think it's the ultimate test of a man uh, to continue to do things when no one's watching. Um, It's a test of your character. Um, Every day is a battle of that. And uh, every day... Uh, without a contract next to me is the the time that I see how much I really love the game because without a contract, will you continue to work your ass off? And I've done so. Um, will, without a contract, will I, you know, still put my best foot forward in other areas or is it more of a, uh, you know, uh, um, in the glory type of thing and I've realized that no I really like to rap like whether I was in the NBA or not it wasn't about now people know me and I think I could rap it's uh I just rap uh I just I do music I make clothes I I play basketball um I'll take on any challenge that's who I am um but it's not a 
I think not having a contract really solidified that in my mind because there's moments that you feel like, oh, well, because the spotlight's on me, I'm just doing stuff because it's here. And you start realizing um, who you are when, you know, nobody's calling, nobody's telling you the workout is at 11, and you find yourself making sure you're getting in the gym for your own peace. Uh, I think that that's when you, you really start to analyze things and understand what love is because I, I really love the game of basketball. And, and what's it been like on Dancing with the Stars to have the fan reaction, the fan support as well? I mean, how does that feel on a personal level for you? How satisfying is it? I mean, for me, uh, just having uh, something new to attach my mind to is exciting. Uh, Danielle has done a great job of making this smooth for me. Um she figures out ways to put routines together that show ballroom, but also personality. Uh, and once I'm able to commit to something in my mind, I, I really feel like I'm able to do anything. And Iman, I want to make sure and let our listeners know if they uh, if they want to keep you going on through the episodes as well, where they can, I know they can vote during the East Coast feed coming up uh, next week as well. Yeah, um, you just text Iman to 21523. Uh, I I done said that so many times, I feel like it's a but Text Iman to 21523. Uh, Yes, you can text that number. It's a five-digit number. It's like you would text an AT&T to check your bill. 21523. Text Iman to 21523. Thank you, guys. That's cool. Now, Iman, what is the the next venture that uh, that has inspired you? Are there any new roads you're going to be taking in the near future? Um, Not new roads. Uh, but um, I am going to be dropping my album. Uh, I don't have a date now that I've, uh, you know, kind of gone off schedule uh, with taking on the Dancing with the Stars opportunity, but uh, I'm releasing outside. uh, This week we're really letting outside go and get to the public, and uh, through releasing that we'll start uh, releasing visuals and an album will follow for people to, you know, sort of see that 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 story from me uh, to understand why I am the way I am and why I won't I won't change in that regard. That's cool. And uh, Iman, if folks want to keep up with the music, the clothing, everything else as well, where's the best place for uh, for folks to keep up with you? You, you just head to imanshumper dot com, man. No space, no periods. Uh, yeah, ImanShumper.com and stay in the loop with all things Iman. Uh, my clothing line will be dropping. Uh, yeah, right now we're, we're, we're all about doing work right now. So That's awesome. Yeah. That's good stuff. ImanShumper.com. All right, well, Iman, it has been great to visit with you today, brother. Continued success on the show, and hopefully we can catch up and uh, and talk as the, the new album drops. Man, I appreciate you guys. Lawyers just love to fight, don't they? Well, a family court lawyer in Pittsburgh named Jeffrey Pollock was on his way into court yesterday and had to go through a metal detector. When he walked through, an alarm went off, so security made him check his pockets and go back through, but it went off again. He told them it was probably the suspenders he was wearing, but he refused to take them off. He got into a heated argument with the guards and did eventually remove his suspenders. The problem is, he also removed his pants. He got fed up, dropped his pants, put them in the bin, and walked through the metal detector in his shirt and underwear. He was standing in the lobby, still pantless, when sheriff's deputies showed up. They arrested him, and he's now facing charges for disorderly conduct. I just assumed that his client's case had to be postponed, but there's no official word on that. We've got uh, Robbie Gray and Mick Conroy with us from Modern English. Got a new album, got an upcoming vinyl release, got uh, a a cruise to talk about, all kinds of stuff. And uh, first off, Robbie and Mick, thank you so much for your time. You're welcome. Thank you. It's a pleasure. Thank you. Now, first off, let's talk about the album that came out in August, uh, live CD, DVD, After the Snow, and uh, what it's like to have new music out there in the hands of folks, especially all we've gone through these last couple of years, guys. Over to you, Mark. Yeah, it's, uh, 
it's it's actually a, you, you know even though we've been you know playing together for ever it's still a, you know it's really exciting for uh, as a band to actually have uh, you know new uh, new uh, records in your hand and new artwork to enjoy the, the album after the snow live is a, a celebration of um the original recording from 40 years ago of the lp after the snow we um uh, uh, the idea it's was done, it's all done in order like the album yep. was the songs are all in the chronological order if that's a word someone's yes. calling yeah that's uh, the word <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so uh, we, it was a, it was a bizarre thing. We we played live at the um, uh, Indigo, the O2 in London, a really amazing venue. But because of uh, the pandemic, it was a, it was a, for a live streaming and uh, a live recording. So uh, we were there all day. It took quite a long time to set up, but yeah. um, it was um, you know it was like the most glorified sound that anyone could do. There was no one in the audience. All there were was the camera people, the crew, the sound recording people. It was um, it, it was like um, a, an amazing, uh, it, it really was a fantastic day. You know, we kind of sound good and we look good as been, well. Um, it's been mixed really well as well. It sounds really good. Yeah. It's very lively. Being okay. a live album, it's quite nice to have it lively. And it is, <laughs> lots of energy in it, you know. How yeah. how hard was it to to get that energy when you're just playing for cameras? I mean, did, did that take you a little while to get that comfort level? No, because we when we rehearse, we play with the same energy. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we're not we're not known for being subtle, really. So. Yeah. <laughs> no. Let's talk about the vinyl release coming up uh, later this month as well. What's what's it like to have vinyl get making the comeback that it's been making as of late as well? Yeah, we've got this record day. I think it's in, in this month, in this month in November, there's a record store day, and they're going to be putting out, you know, I think it's I Melt. Oh, there it is. Look, you can't see it, but Mick's showing you anyway. There's <laughs> a beautiful piece of artwork there. Yeah. And, 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 it, and, it, and it's got a gatefold sleeve. Yeah. It's Ooh. official. <laughs> and I think it might be white, isn't it? Is it white vinyl, Mick? Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. The whole, all mod cons. Yeah, it's absolutely amazing. You know, it's, uh, you know, finally. Vinyl. I mean, we yeah. love vinyl. So for us, it's just normal, you know, to have vinyl. I hated CDs and tapes. It's <laughs> and I've got a 16 year old that uh, I, my wife got me a, a record player a couple of years ago. My 16 year old would rather listen to the vinyl yeah. any day. It's the only way to listen to music, really. Yeah. Yeah. Now, we talked Absolutely. about uh, the, the CD, DVD. We talked about the vinyl coming up. We've also got to talk about the cruise. What's it like to get, get to go out and play the 80s cruise a, a week long coming up in March? How excited are you about that as well? Well, it's going to be crazy. It's going to be really crazy. because <laughs> I mean, we're doing it with people we know, you know, ABC, Flock of Seagulls, Human League. I mean, these are people we, we've played with recently over the years. We've been playing with them. Um, you know, on tours. So we know all these guys really well. So you can imagine what the dinners are going to be like. At night, <laughs> it's going to be good fun. And we're actually doing the opening concert out on the pool deck on the first day. So it's going to be, you know, sunshine and everyone's going to be getting ready to party for the week. So it'll be the big opening, uh, you know, concert. So we're looking forward to doing that. Um, it's nice to get paid to go to these Caribbean islands, I have to say. <laughs> and you guys got the pressure of kicking that whole thing off, too. Yeah, yeah, they yeah. actually wanted, they, they asked us if we'd start it because we did one a few years back and we opened uh, that day as well. And it went so well, they, want, they basically want us to reboot that day again and uh, do it again. So we're looking forward to it. It's going to be, you know, no complaints from modern English about this kind of work. <laughs> <laughs> and, and Mick, for these last couple of years, I mean, this we've we've all gone through things that we never probably ever foresaw. How how did you guys have to change things up uh, to, to keep the sanity going? Well, we, I mean, me and Rob, <laughs> we, 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 we uh, me and Rob in, in England, we live quite close to each other, but um, uh, we, we're so used to communicating via. Um, you know uh, the computer. We we were always sending music and um, parts of songs to each other. So uh, we we've um, and with Gary and Steve, we've actually got an entire new LPs worth of music, yeah. completely demoed, 
And, um, you know, we, we, we were actually really busy during the lockdown. I mean, we've got easily uh, over an album's worth of new material that we're going to start recording next year when we get space in between the endless tour that we're going on. <laughs> but we, you know, well, we, we, say, this is the most exciting thing of all for me is the new music. It's the best stuff we've done probably since the After the Snow album. Wow. So, you know, it's, it's really good. We did some good stuff in the lockdown. It was worth something, that lockdown. Yeah, yeah it, it gave us quite a lot of time to actually think about what we were, how, what we wanted to do and how, um, you know, uh, how the music would sound. It's, it is. It's uh, really exciting for us at the moment. Did you have a change in the sound or the, the inspirations that you had as a result? Yeah, I mean, we... we um, it, 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 because there was kind of like there, no one seemed to no one knows what was going to happen next so it, we just kind of um you know it the music is it's actually a lot more punky you know it's kind of like we thought about how we were when we started you know when we didn't know whether we'd ever make records or get on the radio or or play you know the next concert we didn't know when it was going to happen so um we, everything that we you know that we were doing we kind of like it, it, you know, decided let's just do what we want to do, you know, and go back to, um, you know, listening to how we were when we started. And uh, it is, it's, I mean, I think people, you know, might be a bit surprised at what they're hearing, you know, it's like, a, a you know, at our age, sounding like we did when we were like 17 again. <laughs> it's really important to keep, you know, keep an energy in there. Otherwise you can sort of drift away and, just not sound very exciting. It's and, yeah. and we've got that. We've kept that a uh, bit going, so that's good. And what's been different about this section of songwriting has been that me and Mick and Gary, the guitarist, were actually in the rooms together, so we could feed off each other. And as we were writing parts, we realised it was really good. So we kept banging things down and getting another one going because it just kept working over about six weeks. It just sounded so good and we were just excited and we wanted to keep making more and more songs. And this new album that will happen next year or, yeah, probably next year, you know, by the end of the year, hopefully we'll have it finished. Um, it's going to be it's going to be extraordinary, I'd say. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Well, guys, I want to make sure and, and let folks know where they can find more info to, to get the CD, DVD, the, the, the vinyl, the tickets for the cruise and all that. Where's, where's the best place to find that info? Online, uh, mate. <laughs> yeah, uh, well, <laughs> I, something called Google. Uh, yeah, Google. I, uh, 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 people can go to modernenglish.me, which is our um, – the modern english website and uh, of course there's information on our modern english facebook page and uh, uh the cruise is the 80s cruise.com there's uh, info there i'm not sure if there's any tickets left but um there might be a couple out, of actually yeah, that's, I think it's all yeah, that. Well, wow. That's that's awesome. And uh, again, Mick Conroy, Robbie Gray, I, I've been a fan for so many years. It's been a privilege to have the chance to visit with you guys. Hope you guys have a great rest of your week, and I'm looking forward to the vinyl. Cheers, Cameron. Thanks very much. Brilliant. Thank you. Now, I personally feel like this is somewhat common for guys in relationships. Have you ever had a beard or mustache for a while, then shaved it off, and your significant other got angry about it? Well, a new poll for No Shave November found one in six men have had a relationship argument about facial hair. Now, they didn't break it down into types of fights, but it probably includes fights about not shaving too. And also that five o'clock shadow moment where you go in for a kiss and your face is sandpaper? Now, here are a few more stats from the poll. 11% of men who are taking part in No Shave November say their significant other is not thrilled about it and can't wait for December 1st. Now, are men with beards better with money? 48% of Americans say yes, 52% say no, clean-shaven men are. Is having a beard more expensive than shaving every day? The poll found guys who are clean-shaven spend $35 a month on things like razors and shaving cream. Men with facial hair spend $49 on things like beard oil or getting their beard trimmed. And last, what other types of grooming or personal care are men doing this year? 
12% routinely spend money on massages. 9% said manicures or pedicures. Another 9% said facials. And 7% of men go in for an occasional waxing. It is time for our monthly visit with our good friend, the uh, luxury home builder extraordinaire, and uh, I call him John Lovitz with a hammer, Scott Hamilton Harris. And Scott, always good to see you, my friend. Oh, it's good to see you. And I call you Cameron Dole, my best friend. <laughs> <laughs> it just rolls off the tongue, doesn't it? <laughs> it does, right? It fits, you know. Now, the compliment fits, then yeah. Now, now, how have things been going this last month since uh, since we visited last in the building game, if you will? Oh, they've been good, man. We've been building and uh, just, I don't know if you follow anything we do, but sometimes too busy to post it. But I mean, just new homes going up and like these crazy amounts of steel. And, you know, you go out there and you're just amazed. Every day you see this, you feel like a kid again. And it's, it's, uh, very invigorating. It's just, there's a change every day, right? You know, I used to do architecture. I did interior design, product design, all of that stuff. And you go and you sit at the table and that paper looked the same, Cameron. <laughs> like the new lines, you're like, wow, you know, there's a lot more lines on the computer today than there were yesterday. But uh, <laughs> it's amazing, you know, to go out there and see the someone's thought and then to take someone's thought and make it tangible every day is is a, a blessing that I have. So I, I love it. I'm going to be like that 89 year old guy with the, you know, with the mobile walker trying to go over the wheel. <laughs> Mr. Harris, get out of here. Ah! You know, I got to see this. <laughs> so. How is the housing market everywhere else? I know we, we talked last month and, and I told you we were kind of in the house looking place yeah. in our in our lives. <laughs> I know it's absolutely crazy here. You Is it that way there as well? Kind of nationwide, if you will? Yeah, I mean, I think as long as the interest rates stay where they are or stay lower, you know, you're just going to continue to see that. And there's this thing that keeps happening where we keep making more and more of us right and so there's less and less of the homes and apparently in nine months you can make another person but you know it takes a lot longer than that to build a house so if you just do the math on that you can see why we've got a problem <laughs> why everybody needs one of these things called a home so it's a it's a good business to be in and it's always a demand for it um you know and sadly there's a lot of people that don't have homes uh that we see especially here in los angeles but I've decided I'm no longer calling them homeless uh, with all respect because they're homesteaders because I've seen these homes. They've got white them on Venice Beach, Cameron, and they've got actually white picket fences in front of it now. Really? Like without. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, so this home, but everyone needs a home. That's right. Right. And it's just it, it does create a big demand in the market. And I think it's just an on, you know, an ongoing demand. You don't have a choice anymore. Right. Yeah. That or, live a, or homestead. <laughs> and how has i know we as we get toward the holidays uh as far as shopping and everything like that is concerned we're hearing about supply chain issues and and how is that affecting what you guys are doing as well uh it, it is having it's a good question you know it, it's you're having supply chain issues not as much because of the supply but as much as the chain is broken or the chain has got a kink in it you know in the harbor here and I don't know if you've heard about this, but I mean, it's just backed up for miles because of COVID restrictions before they're letting them bring the docks in. So, you know, it's just crazy, you know? I mean, I'll give you an example. I don't know if you know much about cabinets, but there's these things underneath, they're called uh, hay full of slides. Everyone loves those little self-closing drawers. Yes. Well, those are seven months out. And so now it's because there was a shortage of steel that comes from China, blah, blah, blah. Next thing you know, if you want those, you're going on the black market, you know, and they know. And here's what happens, too, is the greed. Right. You have they notify everybody that it's like the toilet paper. We're not having a toilet paper issue everywhere. <laughs> you know, there may be a shortage of these underbound flights. Huh. So everybody buys them up. You're calling cabinet makers and it's no longer, you know, what the cost is. How soon can you finish it? What's your quality? Hey, you got any of those glides? You got them? <laughs> He's like, yeah, yeah. I bought I bought six boxes before I heard about it. You know, another guy's like, no. I mean, I I know a guy. I know a guy. That's- <laughs> <laughs> and so it becomes a big deal when you're ordering things now. You know, we we have a project that we have to finish in twelve weeks, but uh, they want all new floors and all new lights. And so, really, you know, it's a, a big part of it is what do you have in stock? It's like the end game here with. Uh, 
uh, when you're hiring contractors, so selecting products. So really, it has had a major effect on it. Yeah, I mean, I can tell you, if I want to just order, you know, some new hardwood flooring, um, it's like seven months out to wow. get the stuff that I just custom. Now, what I have to do is we'll have to go and order something that is in stock that's, you know, pre-manufactured and they just happen to have a lot, right? So um, significant issues, yeah, that we've been having. That led us right into, we've got uh, several questions to get to today. We got uh, quite a few listener questions and uh, you better get a, a real good gulp of that coffee before we get into the first one, right? Oh, this is good. This is my, this is my dad's mug. He was in the police. He was in uh SID, the Scientific Investigation Department. For oh, cool. Media. He's no longer with me, so this is I drink out of this cup every day. Well, that's cool. <clears throat> that's cool. Yeah. Well, uh, Scott, our first question comes from Jason in Lake Tahoe, Nevada. And uh, he says, hi, Scott and Cameron. So, hi, hey, Jason. Hey, uh, Jason. <laughs> said, maybe you can help with a, a draft problem. When we're upstairs, even with the heat on, we feel a draft in our loft area. There's no windows. Do you have any suggestions as to what's causing it? Oh, that's good. I'm glad Jason has a regular name. There's like a lot of, you know. <laughs> One of the first we've had. I, I, I know. I like Jason. I like Lake Tahoe. I'm already feeling good about this. So I was going to say the obvious. My dad always told me close the windows. That, that was like the first thing. <laughs> um, you know, that's a big help. But no windows. Wow. Okay. Well, this is good. Now we get to get my dad's scientific investigation department going here. <laughs> so, you know, when I had a, a, a quick story, I had a physiology teacher, Mr. Dillaberti, with just the best toupee you've ever seen. And there was only like a few things I remember in school. And he said, there's one thing that controls everything in the universe. One rule. And I thought about it for weeks. He wouldn't tell us, do you know, kids? No, you know, no. He finally told us, he said that everything is trying to reach a state of equilibrium. That's what causes gravity. That's what causes waves. That's what causes why tall and short, men and women, you know, it's just, it controls the universe, right? Everything. And so knowing that actually made me think about these things and to answer long winded way, what's happening is because I had grew up in that drafty house, you're getting a, a vacuum. So what happens? You turn your heat on, you answered your own question, Jason. When you turn the heat on, what you've done is you've created hot air. And now you've got cold air that's around the bottom of the house that's not sealed up. And it's actually drawing it through because the cold air wants to meet the hot air. They're like, hey, cold air, you're pretty hot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, come on over. And so because of that one law of the universe, what I learned, that is exactly what's happening. You create a draft. How do you fix it, though, right? So what you do is you seal up the cracks because what's happening is as you have hot air, the cold air is trying to knock on the door and say, I want to come in now. And just counterintuitive because the hotter the air, the more the cold air is going to come and want to say hello to the hot. So a lot of times where it comes from is under the floors. You know, everyone goes through so much, so many great measures with their, I've got triple pane glass and this, and, you know, but did you ever look under the floor? I mean, you can probably shine a flashlight on the top and I can go into your house and, and see light down there. And it's quite cold under there. It's damp. Another good place is um, that to seal things up is to do is this is just always, always Cameron, probably even check your house open. You ever open up one of your uh, outlets, you know, take a hole oh, yeah. of the switch plates and it's just a house looks beautiful sealed. There's a hole in the wall. The whole walls, everything's got big holes in it. Right. Yes. And so that's a significant place that nobody really thinks of. And you, if you had one of these little meters to go around, you would see how much air is actually exchanging because those outlets have holes with conduits and holes filled that go right down to the bottom of your house. So open those things up, fill it around with some of that little wonderful foam, right? Don't use too much because your, your wife may be mad. <laughs> it squeezes everywhere. But I mean, that in, a, that in itself could be enough to just make a change. And then you can also do some kind of very simple sheeting underneath your uh, underfloor. Um, and if you don't want it to happen, don't turn the heat on because it's just the law of the universe. <laughs> hot, cold, just, just, love, just deal hot. with, just deal with the cold. Yeah. But it's interesting. You know, it's like, I would sit in my bedroom as a kid and like, why is there a draft? How is it possible? There's actually wind in my room. And you're like, <laughs> I know my mom and dad couldn't afford an air conditioner heater, but there's wind in my room. How is that possible? <laughs> well, now, you know. 
Now we know. Yeah. That's cool. Well, our next one comes from uh, Portland. I think you like Portland as well. Uh, this do. one comes from, I'm not sure if it's Eva or Ava, but uh, I'm going to say Eva in Portland. Okay. It says, uh, saw your Instagram page, wondered if that was a hotel you're now working on. Wow. What of you two? Can you tell us more about it? And thank you. Uh, it's not a hotel because it's bigger. <laughs> <laughs> It looks like a hotel on steroids. I don't know if you've seen any of these things. I have. I mean, I'll, I'll put it this way. I got the new iPhone 13 with the Pro, and I tried to do the cool wide angle thing, and I still can't fit the whole thing in there. So I had to do like, you know, two left. Here's the right half. That's just the front, <laughs> that's just the front of it. So it's on three acres, and it's, um, you know, I'm really honored to be able to do this. It's the, one of the most historical homes in Los Angeles um, that we've completely taken down and put back together again. And um, I don't know if you know at Hearst Castle here in California, but I think uh, the Hearst family would be uh, William Randolph Hearst, who was one of the who created Los Angeles Times. And he was known as having one of the first female architects in the world that did his house. And it's just let's just say the Hearst family are coming over and they're jealous. <laughs> the people of Playboy came over and said, hey, I want one of those right now. What happened? I mean, it just puts all of those to shame. This thing is. I mean, the, the exposure on the front, three stories, 25,000 square feet, wow. you know, to look at a building on the front elevation and see 87 windows, it's just, I mean, it's magnificent. I mean, you just, there's no, you don't understand. It. it doesn't stare at it. And it's, um, it's probably going to be, I think, one of the greatest things that I've done in my life besides have kids and maybe <laughs> other things. Uh, <laughs> But I, you know, I hope you guys stay and watch this thing because it's it's amazing. I just I I don't know what else to say about it. I mean, I'll just give you a little glimpse of what we're doing. We're having um, the levels that we're going to. And I told the client we should do a documentary, but he said no one will watch. Everything is hand carved. <laughs> the whole home is is carved out of in limestone with the acanthus leaves and the big you know over the doorway. We're having these huge things with these reliefs that four inch pieces of stone where they're completely just carving out these like beautiful grape leaves and vines. And, and we're on week four now on the mock-ups of perfecting the perfect grape globe. <laughs> <laughs> like that's the level of detail we're going. As I told the client, I said, you know, you know they're going to say, God, the house was so great, except that one little globe they carved up in that stone there. Just like, you know, <laughs> <laughs> needed one more week. I mean, do you do the globe? Do you do the globe crates or you do those kind of drippy longer ones? You know, what was it? So, I mean, if you ever come to L.A., I'd love to show it to you, too. It's, it's stunning. Really stunning. Well, well, I love watching. I've been following the pictures as well on, on Instagram. And uh, yeah, I, I thought it was a hotel the first time when I was showing Lindsay, my wife, and she's like, wow, that's a, that's an impressive hotel. And it's like, no, that's a house. That's I, a I, I got I don't. I got to send you some of the newer ones with the stone on it. It's, it's just amazing. So Eva, come on down. We'll, we'll show it to you. Thank you for being interested. <laughs> we also have uh, from Detroit, Michigan, we've got Greg who says, Hey guys, with winter fast approaching, what can we do to winterize our house? Uh, that's a good timely question. What can we do, Greg? Uh, so he's in Detroit. That's yeah, cold out there. I think you're screwed. It's a little late. To add that. <laughs> it's already cold. <laughs> That's too late. It's your done. Um, now, look, you know, there's so many things that you can do to homes that you kind of do preemptively when we're creating them. Um, look, there's all the obvious things like we talk about, you know, caulking around the windows and filling all the seams and, you know, insulation is really great. You know, and we did Ed Begley's junior's house, you know, he would always call it do the low hanging fruit first. Um, and it, and I think he said it, you know, I heard him say it so many times, it's ingrained in my head, but, you know, it's doing the insulation, you know, is, a, is an easy thing. Um, and here's what's interesting. When you look at these things in California, we do analysis here, uh, it's called a Title 24 code of where the energy and heat loss and gains are. And, you know, 80% of it is happening through your roof. And so if you feel like that, I can't open my walls up and deal, you're really going to, it's good to have, but it's that icing on the cake. So if you have one of those open attics and you can do some R30, you know what? Let's call it crazy. Do R38, do R40, you know, insulation. It's great. It's like, imagine going outside in the winter and I forgot to put on my coat. 
That's basically <laughs> what you're dealing with. But I want to say, here's something that I think most important for your listeners, um, winterizing your house. Everybody forgets this. Check your gutters. Number one, that's the obvious. Here's the big one. Check your area drainage. Almost nobody checks the area drainage. Here's how you do it. You just take off any one of your uh, drain covers, put a hose down there and see if the water goes down. It has been so great for business camera. I can tell you, <laughs> we do three to five of these a year where um, what happens is you get one of the drains that are blocked, right? Around the house. And if you've got a more sophisticated house with downspouts, it's collecting all the water from the roof. It's channeling it down. It's putting it into your area drainage. And you know what happens is the area drain is not put together very well. And you get one little tree root that grows through it, or you get dirt. And the gardener kept just blowing all the leaves in there during summer. You're done. We just had a basement um, in near Beverly Hills area that had about $3 million in damage to it. Wow. Because of that. Um, and it happened in about 10 minutes. It was, and we found a tree root that was broken. You know, it, Basically, the water just goes down to the light well, finds the lowest point, had nowhere to come out, starts filling up, and the basement turned into a bathtub. Wow. We had movie theaters down there. It had gyms. It had um, kitchens. You know, it was just, there was brilliant what this thing had in there. And so the entire thing was just gutted. You know, we had to have about 75 people down there with hazmat suits to remove everything before the mold started. And all of that was due to one tree root because somebody, and I said, remember we talked last year, I said, you want to check your area drainage? It's like, I checked the gutters. And so, <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I, I'll yeah. be checking the area drainage from now on too. So as far as winterizing your house, you know, there's not a lot you can do except doing the insulation. Of, but please, you know, check your drainage systems because, and I guess in Detroit, you know, it might be more about the snow over there, but um you know, for most of us, it's significant. I mean, it, it just, it hits people by surprise. Um, so check, you should check yours, Cameron. Yeah. <laughs> and our, our last one comes from Huntsville, Alabama, and it's from Susan. And said, uh, can't decide between putting in laminate floors or tile. Said they have kids and pets. Can you give them any inside information on what to look for to make sure that they'll install either right? Oh, yeah. You know, I like the way you say Susan from Huntswell. <laughs> it's, it's just <laughs> bold all the time. It's beautiful. Um, yeah. So as far as the end, the quick answer to that is as far as laminate floors, lamb is not glam. It just you got to say no. Lamb is not glam. Pile is always in style. You just and, and here's what I'm going to do for here's what I'm doing, Susan. This is going to be like that moment on Oprah. You know, or the Ellen DeGeneres <laughs> and everybody gets to look under their chair and there's a car for everybody. I am willing to help you with this. You can call me after. Uh, we'll give all the contact information, but you cannot do laminate floors. Made your life easy. Um, these laminate floors are so, um, they're so temporary. You know, it's just, we deserve to have some luxury in our life. And these floating laminate floors were great for business. They're thin, they're shipped. You know, you can make a lot of it. It looks finished, but we don't need to live in that kind of shell. Um, and a lot of them are made in areas where there's a lot of off-gassing, so they're really not healthy for you. So um, a lot of the chemicals are using, you know, it takes three years to figure it out. And tile, you know, can be very affordable. I even did tile in my house. So if you want something that's indestructible, uh, a porcelain tile is great. Um, ceramic tile is good, but use a porcelain tile. I bought it for my house. It was $1.99 a square foot. And I did it in a pattern, you know, where it's those longer pieces, but I did a chevron pattern. And so it's kind of like a herringbone. So it really did a really nice job. Um, and if you do that kind of flooring, it's kind of hard to mess up, you know, except for making it kind of crooked. I mean, it's really, <laughs> really easy. So again, Susan, uh, you're, we're going to say uh, lamb is not glam and tiles and style. So that's what you're doing. We'll talk after. <laughs> that's what you have to do. You know, I'll give you all the tips and hints. There you go. Well, uh, again, Scott Hamilton Harris, I always want to make sure and let folks know where the best place to keep up with everything, where to, uh, where to submit their questions. Obviously they can, uh, they can email those to us or uh, more information about you as well. All right. Yeah. It's uh, Scott at uh, building C group.com is my uh, email. Happy to tell you my life story. If you want send over a request. 
Um, but also you can go to our website. It's built, name of the company is Building Construction Group. About as generic as it gets, that was the idea. <laughs> and the website is scott at buildingcgroup.com. You can find me on Instagram. I think it's scott underscore harris underscore building. And you can find me through Cameron on Facebook. Uh, I don't Twitter. I'm just... After Trump did that whole Twitter thing, I just I can't do it. So, <laughs> I understand. Sorry. I just I can't. I can't. I, I, I use it for marketing only. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But, uh, and I hope to hear from you all next month. And I love spending time with you, Cameron. It's like the highlight, one of the highlights of my month. No matter how things are going, they're always going better with you. Well, I appreciate that, Scott. I appreciate that. And uh, look forward to catching up again next month. Same here. Same here. Well, thanks again for joining us for this 150th episode in Season 2 of Good Questions with Cameron Dole. If you ever have a comment, question, maybe anything else you'd like to know, you can hit me up on the contact page at gqwithcam.com. You can also find me on the socials, Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, and Facebook at GQ with Cam. If you'd like to help out in the funding for this podcast, you can visit our merch store where we've got hoodies, tumblers, mugs, stickers, shirts, backpacks, and more, gqwithcam.com forward slash shop. And if you have a special guest idea, just email me, Cameron at gqwithcam.com. Thanks again to our good friend, Brandon Allen, for coming up with our theme music. We're going to let him play us out and hope you guys have a great rest of your evening. <laughs> <laughs>